I'd like to welcome everyone to today's Tech Talk, brought to you by Nastel Technologies. Our speaker today is Albert Mavashev, CTO at Nastel, and the topic today is benchmarking WebSphere MQ deployments. Take it away, Al. Hello, everybody. Today's topic is benchmarking WebSphere MQ environments, and what we're going to be doing during this um, presentation is establish a benchmark. Uh, run some tests and see if we can compare the results and make some conclusions. Uh, but before we run the benchmark, um, I'd like to put together, uh, I, what I did is put together um, a roadmap for the, for the benchmark itself, which really uh, consists of, number one, uh, trying to define some of the performance targets and some of the KPIs uh, that we want to capture. Um, such as message rates, uh, message sizes, um, and, and also being able to measure target response times or round trip times from uh, application to um, uh, destination and back. Uh, we want to run a few topologies. One is going to be a very simple one as you um, uh, on the single queue manager. The other is going to involve um, a couple of queue managers and, and some channels. We're also going to define some benchmark procedures and tools that we're going to use to, to, to run the benchmark and, and measure the, um, uh, the results. And obviously, we want to run the benchmark and compare and make some adjustments. So for the first uh, benchmark, uh, we're going to uh, establish kind of what we call a baseline. And um, uh, for this specific test, I'm going to use um, uh, see if we can achieve a performance target of a thousand messages per second. We're going to run um, a hundred byte messages. The target system is going to be um, a single server running um, a one CPU. It's about four core. It's a it's a four core machine running about eight gigabytes of memory, running solid state drives. Uh, we're going to start with a single queue manager and running uh, a single local queue going to run a burst of um, a thousand messages and for tools we're going to use uh, MQO sonar which we have available on www.nastal.com for free download you're obviously welcome to go there and get your copy and run in your environment as well one of the things that we're going to do as part of the process is we're going to run confirm and delivery and confirm on arrival uh, report messages in order to measure how quickly applications are actually um, dequeuing messages off the queue, and we also want to measure message latency on the queue itself. And the topology is going to be for the first benchmark that we're going to run is a single queue manager again. So you have a an MQ sonar that's putting a message on the um, on the target application queue. The application uh, then uh, receives that message, responds back immediately with a response back onto the reply queue, um, and the MQ sonar um, then receives that response. The concept here is we want to be able to measure average round trip, which is really an average of the sum of each of the individual steps, uh, from step one to, to step two, three, and four. The average mes message latency, in, this, in a sense, is really the difference between um, uh, moment that the message actually arrives in the queue, which we're going to get a confirm on arrival uh, report, and by the time the message is actually dequeued and delivered to the application, which is um, we call the confirm on delivery. So, in a, in a sense, you have an average of sum of uh, time that, uh, between the T2 and the T1, which is different between the confirm on delivery and a confirm on arrival. So let's see if we can run this benchmark. And I'm going to switch out of this. It's going to, again, it's going to run on a single queue manager. Let me get out of my, um, my presentation. And what I'm going to do is um, uh, bring a command prompt where I have an MQ sonar um, installed. And I set up um, a utility here where my queue manager name is QM Alpha. I set up a local queue, which I call the local command queue, uh, where I'm going to make a uh, run a burst of a thousand messages, and I have obviously an application that's uh, reading on the from the local command queue, 
and responds back to the uh, the empty sonar application. And we're going to run confirm and delivery reports. I have some confirm and delivery flags and confirm and arrival. So let's run this burst of uh, messages. So again, we're going to run the 120 byte messages in this case, um, 1,000 uh, messages uh, in the burst. Uh, it's going to take a few seconds to complete. Okay, so this specific test took about 21 seconds. Um, as you could see, the the round trip rate taking the um, reports out of the equation, or actually in this case, the reports are included in the in in the in the computation of the uh, of the rates is 235 messages a second. But taking the report messages out, we are clocking at about 141 messages a second. As you could see, we spent about 14, 14 seconds doing puts and about six seconds doing, or seven seconds doing gets. The average rate was about 70 uh, messages a second, and the average get rate was 576 messages a second. So we are, uh, we have kind of a, um, a dis or imbalance in the way that we're doing puts versus gets. So let's run this a few more times and see what kind of numbers we're gonna be getting. So again, um, we're going to run the same exact test and see what the what the results are. Now, in this case, we did a little better. Uh, we ran a test within 15 seconds. The effective round trip was about 200 messages a second, and it took us about 12 um, uh, 12 uh, seconds to do a put. Um, Total time to do a get was about two or three seconds, and again we see a tremendous, uh, you know, difference between the put rates and the get rates. Um, a, a few other uh, things that I want to mention here, um, uh, for example, um, average round trip time. So it took an average two, 2.8 seconds per message. Um, the propagation time is 2.9 seconds and the reflection time is 1.7 seconds. The propagation time is really how long does it take for a message to actually arrive to the destination to be picked up by the application. And the reflection time is how long does for the application takes to actually respond back with the message. 1.7 mes uh, seconds per message. So we uh, compute summary general performance indicators and the message performance indicators. Uh, one of the key ones also is uh, message latency. Um, that's only computed if you have confirm and delivery and confirm and arrival uh, flags, uh, the specific flags enabled. That way we can actually compute how long or what is the difference between when the message first, first arrives on the queue versus when it's actually delivered. So we know that the arrival rate is about 78 messages per second, and the delivery rate is about 64 messages per second. Now, let's run it one more time so we can uh, establish um, uh, a reasonable uh, baseline. So we are about hovering at about 200 messages a second uh, um, in the second run. If we go to the previous one, we have also about 141 messages a second. And then let's do just uh, another run and see what kind of numbers we're getting. So this run is another 144 messages in a second. So that's in our first benchmark. So we're running anywhere from 150 to 200 messages round trip time um, a second. And we're spending anywhere from 8 to 14 seconds in the put uh, and 3 to 6 seconds in, or 7 seconds in the get. Now let's go back to our second test that we're going to run and we're going to compare our uh, first test with the second test. Uh, let me um, go to my um, benchmark number two. Now benchmark number two, we're going to use multiple queue managers. Uh, we, in, in this case, we're going to use two queue managers. We're going to use channels, send a receiver channel between each one. Again, the same system running two queue managers interconnected via channels. And the channels are set to a batching of 50, message, uh, 50 messages per batch. 
Again, we're going to run a burst of a thousand messages. And uh, again, we're going to use MQ Sonar that you can download at nastel.com and use confirm and deliver. So we're going to use the same exact setup, but we're going to use two QMages instead of one. Um, this is the topology for the benchmark number two. Obviously, it's a lot more involved. You have a lot more steps. Uh, step number one, put a message on a remote queue. Via transmission queue, the message is going to end up on the application queue. The application queue is going to read the message, put the response back. Um, message response is going to travel over the channel and go to the reply queue and then consume back by the MQ sonar. Again, the same formula applies, it's just we have a lot more steps in the mix of how we compute the average round trip and the average message latency. So let's run this benchmark and see how that actually compares to our, um, to our initial test. Now, in a sense, I'm going to um, have another uh, window that I have open here. Uh, let me bring that up. Um, I'm going to run another NS uh, ping application where we're going to use a remote command queue of the same queue manager that we used before, where we ran the local test. Let me move that to the side. We're going to use, again, a burst of 1,000 messages with confirm and delivery and confirm and arrival. And one of the things I want to do, obviously, is to make sure that our channels are up and running first, just to make sure that our test will be valid. We have uh, two Q managers, QM Alpha. We have a test from Alpha to Beta. In this case, Beta is QM Tablet uh, 64 Q manager. And uh, let's look at the channels here to make sure the channels are up and running. Yep, we have a channel beta uh, to alpha, which is the return channel from the, our second queue manager to the first queue manager. So we're basically going to run messages from QM alpha traveling to, uh, to tablet 64 and back. We have queue managers up and running, so let's run this test and we're going to make a comparison. So again, running um, a thousand message batch, 120 bytes, um, and we'll see what the results are. Let's bring up our uh, last batch, and we're going to make a comparison. So that's an interesting uh, run. We have, um, in this case, involving two queue managers. As you can see, the difference actually is, is not significant. In fact, the numbers are almost identical. We have a total put time of 6 seconds, total get time of 13. Um, we have an effective round trip of around the same number of messages. So let's run this a, a few more times and see what the results are. Okay, now this is an interesting one, um, and I, th I um, the first one was probably our channels were um, kind of sleeping and had to wake up to run the test, but as you could see, our actual times have jumped significantly. Um, and in fact, as you could see, one of the, the total put time um, is actually almost three times less than the total put time on the first test which is um, not what you would expect. You would expect that the local, the first benchmark, would run significantly faster than the one in the second benchmark because we have channels involved and a lot more complex um, topology. So let's run this a few times just to make sure that it's not a, uh, just a one-time deal and see what the, what the third um, run will yield. And it's actually showing significant, uh, again, same result. We have a dramatically uh, different um, uh, rates. In this case, again, if you compare the total put times, we're again about three or four times faster um, on, the, on the second benchmark than we are on the, on the, on the, on the first one. 
And that's kind of puzzling to me because is if we bring up the, the first benchmark, we look at that, this is a much simpler um, uh, run and a much simpler layout, which should yield a faster round trip time. Benchmark number two involves a lot more moving pieces, especially we have channels in between. And one would assume that this benchmark should actually be slower. So it's interesting to see exactly why this is happening. Why is it that we have um, the one that's actually using remote benchmark? Let's run it again and see the kind of numbers that we're that we're getting. Um, one would expect that this second run is should be significantly slower, or uh, it should be slower than the first one. And again, we have much different outcome, a 616 messages a second and almost 400 messages or 370 messages a second in the run here. But we, we can run again a benchmark locally and see whether we can achieve these numbers. And uh, I mean, I've run this benchmark before and uh, results are fairly consistent that the running directly to the local queue versus um, running on the 2 queue manager configuration um, on the same system yields, and again, consistently lower number on the first benchmark compared to the second benchmark using the channels. So what I want to do here is try to kind of get to the bottom of it as to why this is happening. And what I've done is um, the only difference between the two tests, as, as we've shown before, is that we have channels and we also have remote queues. And one thing that I did is try to eliminate each one. Uh, so what I've done is created a test XMIT queue, and we're going to try to see if, if the difference is in the transmission queues versus local queues. Well, transmission queues are, in fact, local queues. So is it possible that writing to a transmission queue is somehow different than writing to a regular local queue? So what we've done is um, I'm going to run um, um, an echo application that's going to um, connect to uh, a test XMIT queue. And we're going to try to run um, the benchmark against the transmission queue directly and see if our test result will change. And see if it's in fact has anything to do with the transmission queue. Um, again, we run the test. Uh, we have an echo application that responds back on the local system. So in this test, we're actually not running the channels. We're just running uh, a local test through the transmission queue. And again, there's no difference. So the, the time that we spend in the put, and again, the rates are fairly consistent with the one that we ran with the local queue. So my uh, conclusion here is it's not really the transmission queue. So the transmission queue seems to be behaving the same as the local queue. And really, the puzzling part seems to be in the channels themselves. And um, one of the things that I've done here is um, try to play with the batching. And um, if we actually go in and modify the batch sizes on the channels, we should see a different outcome. So here, I'm going to send from 50 to 1. We're going to stop this channel. And then we're going to restart it. So let's start this channel back up. And then we're going to do the same thing for the return channel. We're going to stop this channel. Change the properties to one and start the channel back up. Let's wait for it to, um, to initialize so we have it up and running. So now what I'd like to do is run the same remote test with a remote test with channels only running at a batch of one. And let's see how what would be the difference compared to our baseline 
on the on the local system and uh, let's see what we get in this test where the channels are only running with a batch of one message. As you can see here, our rates have dropped significantly. So we're still running a little better, but we're in the same ballpark as our local test. And it seems to be, again, that it's not in the XMIT queues, it's not in the, um, in the local queues, it really has to do with the, the applications that actually consume the message of the queue. So if we bring up our, um, our uh, topology here, it seems to be that the main difference in how the, the benchmark runs and, the, and, and the, the KPIs that we are looking at is in the way that the target application, in this benchmark we have the target application, our echo application. Here, the target application that's actually consuming off the remote queue is the actual channel. So it seems to be that the reason is the contention that's caused by in queuing and dequeuing messages off that queue. And in fact, it seems to be that depending on how the application is actually dequeuing these messages off that queue, dramatically impacts on the throughput on the, um, of, the, uh, of the actual benchmark. So it seems to me you can vary and play around with the batching, or you can actually change the, the behavior of the target application to, to use batching in order to improve the overall throughput of an application. So that's an interesting finding because I expected in this run the benchmark number two to become significantly faster uh, than benchmark number um, uh, or the benchmark number one to be significantly faster than benchmark number two. That didn't work out that way. It seems to be that the way, uh, seems to be that uh, obviously in this case, IBM has a fairly efficient mechanism of how they uh, access these queues and how they pull messages out without really blocking the put on the, um, on the, on the remote queue. And that impacts signif significantly the rates as well as the total put time, which is, which is what we see is one of the biggest differences. Um, and that is, seems to be uh, completely governed, or one of the biggest factors in governing that is really the batch size on the channels. And in effect, we see that the remote part of that, given the batch size of 50, ran, two, ran almost twice the one of the local queue. Of, of the local test. It's an interesting assumption. And again, one of the things that obviously you can use the MQ sonar is for is as you make changes to the environment or as you, for example, make uh, configuration changes such as, you know, we could take a, a, a queue and change from persistent, non-persistent, obviously you're going to see dramatic difference in performance. Or as you make changes to channel configurations, um, in terms of, um, you know, properties and runtime parameters of, of the channels, it would be, I would say, it would be very useful to run these types of benchmarks and see what the numbers are and see how they compare to the baseline or to the actual target. And these numbers are actually going to be the top-line numbers because when we run the benchmark, we don't really look at um, the, the business logic, right? These are messages are put on the queue and messages dequeued and replies are put back as quickly as possible. So your applications, as you benchmarks and you produce these uh, numbers, are actually um, probably going to be less than these, right? So these are, think of it as these are your top line numbers that you could expect out of the topology that you have in place. These are probably not the numbers that your applications will achieve uh, because the business logic is going to impact uh, these uh, these numbers. Again, interesting findings. Um, um, in my view, again, for some reason, again, I, I think it has to do with the contention on these XMIT queues and the reply queues that dramatically impact the throughput, and hence we see a difference in the benchmark one versus benchmark two, where we see benchmark two performing unexpectedly again, performing significantly faster. Um, than benchmark number one. And with that, I'd like to conclude. 
our session. Um, if you'd like to um, contact me or contact NASTEL, uh, please uh, don't hesitate. You can also download um, MQ Sonar from uh, uh, on our website, www.nastel.com. And again, you can run that benchmark in your environment and see the kind of numbers that you're getting. Um, if you want to share them with me, please um, send it to amalashef at nastel.com or you can send your results if you want to share them to info at nastel.com. Thank you. Thank you very much, Albert. That was quite interesting. I, I learned a lot. We're going to move into a Q&A session and we're happy to answer any questions you might have. But I also want you to know this session's being recorded and it'll be available on demand tomorrow afternoon and you can pass it on to your colleagues and they can listen and view what they missed. Also this is part of an ongoing series of Tech Talks. The next one scheduled for August 29th led by Richard Nicola, our VP of Engineering and the topic is how to take advantage of the new DLQ processing in WebSphere MQ 7.1 and 7.5. Now on to the questions and answers. Please send in your questions. Thanks. All right, it looks like we got our first question, and it is this. What are the COD and COA flags on the NSQ ping command line? Albert, what say you? COD and COA flags are uh, stand for confirm and deliver and confirm and arrival, which basically uh, instruct MQ to generate reports. It could be used to measure arrival and delivery rate on target queues as well as the message latency and the message age um, that the message actually sits on the queue. So they're uh, very useful flags if you want to measure um, performance of the messages as they arrive and get delivered to the target queue. More questions? Looks like here's another one. Okay, Albert, what about history? When I'm creating benchmarks and running these, how do I bring history into the equation? Albert? Uh, currently, MQ Sonar does not maintain history. It, it just displays information for the current benchmark. Uh, however, if you pair it up and, uh, with Autopilot M6, um, which is our enterprise product, uh, you can report these metrics to Autopilot M6 and have it record history as well as notification and alerting. So you need to um, you need to have Autopilot M6 in order to uh, to get history. Okay, we have another question here. Uh, this one is about persistence. Are the messages you've been talking about persistent? All um, all benchmarks uh, use non-persistent messaging uh, to run the benchmarks. However, you can use persistent and non-persistent depending on the queue definitions. So um, if you define as a default persistence on the queue as persistent, then the benchmark will run as um, in persistent mode. And obviously if you ch change it to non-persistent, it will run in non-persistent mode. So it really depends on what the queue definition is. Here's another question. This one is about documentation. Is there documentation on MQ Sonar? and how to read the results. Albert, what do you say? MQ Sonar comes with documentation. Uh, if you download MQ Sonar, it comes with in a zip file uh, that contains um, uh, Windows, Linux, and IX builds, in, as well as the PDF uh, that describes um, you know, how to use it, how to set it up, the different topologies, as well as if you're a user of Autopilot M6, how to integrate it with Autopilot M6 as well. When you are doing these benchmarks and you're using the pings that you spoke about, can you also do this with existing applications? Albert, what say you? MQ Sonar currently pings um, by default either um, MQ command server, so it sends a ping message to the command server and expects a reply back, or you can ping uh, a supplied um, MQ Echo application that's supplied with MQ Sonar that pretty much does the same. It receives a message and pings it back. 
Now you can ping an existing application, um, which could be pretty much any application, although the requirement is that the application is going to have to be able to recognize a ping command, which is a PCF QManager ping command, and reply back. Um, if the, obviously, if the application doesn't support that, it'll probably get a message and won't be able to or won't know what to do with it. So, but currently, you can either ping through a command server or through um, a supplied Echo application. More questions, folks? Oh, looks like here's another one. So, while I'm running these benchmarks, can it have a side effect of degrading uh, my CPU? Albert, your thoughts? Benchmark typically should not uh, degrade CPU, but it really depends on the kind of flags that you supply in the in, in the MQ sonar command line. Uh, if you're running a, a thousand message bursts or you're running uh, ten thousand or a million message bursts, it also depends if you're doing persistent and non-persistent messaging. Obviously, in non-persistent mode, the CPU usage is going to be higher because most of the messaging is going to be done in memory. If you're doing persistent then it's going to be mostly I.O. bound. So it could take, uh, obviously it would take CPU, it depends on the kind of benchmarks you run, the kind of flags you supply, and the volumes that you specify. We have another question here. Albert, can you create different message profiles other than bursts? Something that we would feel, you know, is more production-like. Al, take it. Uh, currently, MQ Sonar uh, depends on the command flags, command line flags that you supply. So you can define your message profiles or, or benchmark profiles by basically defining different set of flags, and you obviously can include them in the batch files. Um, also, MQ Sonar can run in the background and periodically uh, generate those bursts um, based on a predefined interval. So you can either run it uh, on the command line one by one, or you can have it run in the background and generate those bursts at some regular interval specified by the user. All right, well, it looks like there are no more questions. I'll give you another second or two. No, I don't see any. All right, then we're going to bring this tech talk to a close. I want to thank everyone for your time, and I hope the information was useful. Please contact us if you have suggestions for other topics and we'd be happy to accommodate those. And again, as we said earlier, this is part of an ongoing series. On August 29th, you'll see how to take advantage of the new DLQ processing in 7.1 and 7.5. And then we have a variety of other topics we're planning, plus the prior recordings that we have on our site. Thanks again, and have a great day.